this is a values-based exposure practice to train psychological flexibility skills. So putting ourselves in contact with aversive and, and difficult stimuli for the purpose of training psychological flexibility or the ability to be present and in the moment to be open and accepting of difficult thoughts and feelings and not struggling, fighting, doing compulsions, adding to that and to do what matters. So to be present, open up and do what matters. So building patterns of behavior around our values, um, increasing the habits and the way we engage in life so that it is values based and reflects the type of person we want to be and, and the type of things we want to do in our life. And it's not about white knuckling or putting ourselves in contact with difficult triggers for the purpose of, of sort of forcefully trying to get rid of OCD or any difficult mental health challenge could be generalized anxiety, social anxiety, depression, other things as well. It is about skills practice and skills training. So what we're going to do again is use uh imaginary trigger or imaginary um, stimuli that, that brings up the difficulties. And you could also use a, a video clip or listen to something or um, some other way of triggering uh, the difficulties. You could also go out in life and use these skills as you engage in something that is difficult and anxiety provoking and, and triggers obsessive thoughts and um, other difficulties. So you could do, you could transfer these skills into life. And we really want to build this up at our level. So you might start at a very easy level. It might not even be related to your core OCD area. It might be something that triggers general worry or life stress or a bit of um, irritation. And then you build up the skill with that before moving on to the difficulty. So piece by piece, as your skills get better, you then apply it. Um, if you're uncertain about this, then certainly you should be working with a therapist. This is to increase the skills that we can apply to exposure and response prevention. It's not um, to start from the beginning. We really need some awareness of our difficulties and we need a therapist or some support to do that. So with that all in mind, finding your comfortable position to do this practice and we can drop anchor and ground ourselves to start. So get into your body a little bit, adjust your posture, push your feet into the ground, take a deep breath. You could even stretch a little. You could move your body, find areas of tension and loosen them. So just getting in touch with your body. And this really helps with the do what matters part. We need to be in our body to engage in actions that matter. And then acknowledging your thoughts and feelings and so noticing your mind where you hear your thoughts in your head, where you see any images, observing that and observing what you feel in your body. Different parts of your body, your head, your chest, your abdomen, the wider body, notice what you feel. And then engage in what you're doing in this moment, in this practice, listening to what I'm saying and put in your mind here in this moment and you can always use these skills at any point you need to throughout the practice and then connecting to values and your motivation behind this practice remember why you want to do this you want to get your life back you want to engage with the people that matter you want to do the activities you care about you want to get more freedom in your life to do the things that you want to spend your time on rather than struggling with these mental comp compulsions and the difficulties you're facing. So think about that motivation, core values, important people, important parts of your life, goals, actions, the very least self-compassion. You will engage in with this from a place of self-compassion and self-care. And then the other reflection is thinking about workability. If I continue responding to my obsessions or 
depressive feelings or worry in this way with these mental thought loops and, and compulsive thought loops, where does it take me? My life gets smaller. It promises safety, but actually everything gets tightened and constricted. And I actually don't get to be with the people I care about and do the things I want to do. So the thing it's trying to protect me from is actually happening. So it's not workable. And then a much more workable approach is to learn these psychological skills and then to engage in habits and behaviors and with people in a way that reflects our values and to do it bit by bit, gradually as a training. So workability is what I'm doing working for me. Is there a more workable solution? And as we go through any step, just notice how your mind responds to what I say. If it debates or fights, or worries or triggers obsessions, just keep catching that, observing it, bringing it back, surfing the urge to do the compulsions in your head or in your body and coming back, coming back. So then when you're ready, bring into mind the difficult image or words, memory, experience in life that is a trigger. Or watching a video or looking at a picture. And just bringing it to mind for a few moments. And then putting down an actively generated thought and just watching what happens automatically, noticing the intrusive thoughts, the obsessions, or noticing the intrusive worries or depressive thoughts, the things that happen automatically. If it's difficult to see whether it's automatic or a compulsion, just treat it all as stuff to observe that just notice and you'll develop that skill over time as you practice this you'll notice what you can put down and what is automatic so just observing that and noticing what's going on in your body as well is it triggering anxiety is it triggering another feeling a felt sense of uncertainty disgust shame Depressive feelings, numbness, shutdown, sadness, depersonalization, something else. Just notice what you're feeling. If you're unsure, just notice that. And then engage with the world around you. Look around, notice what you can see. Maybe name a few things you can notice around you that stand out to you. Name a few sounds you can hear feel physical contact and engage in what you're doing. And this is really about engaging in life. So it doesn't have to be your senses, which is using that as a way to practice, but it could be engaging in a conversation. It could be doing an activity you care about. It could be reading something or engaging intellectually in something. It could be movement and exercise so anything you value but we're just using our senses because it's convenient it's here now and then as you engage in this moment and what you're doing trying to allow the difficulty to be just in the background and don't do the compulsions surf the urge to do that and just stay in the moment allowing this stuff to come and go even if it's going ping 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 in the background just let that happen if there's difficult feelings, you can get into your body a little bit more. You can get into movement if it's very overwhelming or it's just too much right now to accept. Then get moving, get engaged in a task, do something, and then build this skill up. But if you can be with that difficult feeling, allow it to be there, notice it. What is it made up of? There may be the core sensations, but what other feelings are there in the body? If you divided it up into pieces, what is it made up of? And look at those pieces curiously. What are their qualities? Is it changing? Is it shifting? You could zoom in on the most intense area and really investigate what it's like, that feeling in the body or that numbness. 
and notice what your mind is saying about the feeling. Often it will be doing compulsions about the feeling, or judging, analyzing, doing things like that. Unhook, notice those thoughts, notice the feeling. And then engage with the world around you. So in the engage stage, we can be present and focused, allowing things to be in the background. If they start to distract us and, and distress us, we can acknowledge them again and then refocus. Or we can spend a bit longer investigating in order to build up this ability to observe, to accept, and allow things to be there without doing the compulsions, without doing the stuff that intensifies and adds fuel to this. You know, it might feel like it relieves us in the moment, but ultimately builds this machinery that, that takes over our life. So without doing the compulsions, engage in this moment now in what you're doing and allow it to be there or acknowledge it or investigate it if you wanted to build more acceptance. And then we'll do another round of it. So this time... You could go beneath that initial fear. You could think, what is beneath that? You know, is it that I am afraid of some danger to myself or others? Or is it about unhappiness, something taking away my life, meaning, pleasure, connection with people? Or for others, is it harming others' happiness? So generally, it could be a safety fear or an unha unhappiness fear. So dig below and, and see what it's about. Is it sort of social shame and being rejected, isolated? Is it a fear around safety and health and well-being or unhappiness? And then bring up an image that relates to that. You know, an image of you in hospital or image of you in prison or image of you being judged by other people or an image of something else like that. It's difficult. If it's too much to do that right now, if you're early in your skills journey, just stay with the same trigger or a different trigger like that. And then this time do the same thing. You know, acknowledge that image or words and what that triggers in you. And again, notice your thoughts and feelings. Step back, observe. Every time you're pulled into the flow of thought, notice and come back again. Keep coming back to that observer position. And then engage in the world around you and what you're doing. Look around you, notice what you can see, what you can hear, where you are and what you're doing in this moment and again try to allow the difficulties to be in the background surf the urge to to do compulsions come back to the present moment be present open up do what matters this time we're going to do a bit of practice at activating the compulsions using our skills to unhook put those down and come back and it can be useful to dip into that stream and then dip out of it, dip in and dip out of it. So this time go for the easier image again or words or picture or video, memory, bring it up and then stop actively thinking about it or generating that image or thought. Unhook first of all, so observe your mind. Notice what you're feeling. Engage with the world around you. Look around you with curiosity. Notice details, things you can see. Be in this observe and describe mode of mind. Curiosity. Not judging what you're seeing. If it triggers obsessions, just looking around, notice that and refocus in this observe and describe mode. Do it as best you can. If you're experiencing derealization or things seem a bit unreal, then acknowledge that and then just focus as best you can on the world around you, where you are, 
allowing that difficult feeling to be there. And then now we're going to activate the compulsions. So think about the compulsions you've been struggling with, whether they are worrying and planning or they are checking or they are planning ways to avoid or they are reassurance, self-reassurance. They could be, you know, checking. They could be analyzing feelings. They could be resenting the situation and judging and getting stuck in it could be analyzing other things, could be counting sequences, numbers, magical um, thinking rituals, anything at all that you've identified as, as a compulsion. For a moment, get it going, the difficult compulsion. Say the words, get caught in it for a moment. And then put it down, go back to observing your mind put down actively generating anything, acknowledge what you're feeling, maybe get into your body a little bit again, and then engage with the world around you, look around you, notice what you see here, physical touch, where you are, what you're doing. And then we do it again, get that compulsive thought loop going. It could also be depressive thoughts or worries, generalized anxiety worries or social anxiety worries or something else. It could be a more awareness, checking a feeling, you know, aversively monitoring a feeling, judging something in your body, mind getting stuck on a som somatosensory feeling. So get that compulsion going. So the thought loop, the ritual, the reassurance, the avoidance, the analyzing, a feeling, checking, monitoring, get it going for a moment. And then unhook from that, put it down, acknowledge what your mind does automatically. We're not trying to suppress thought or stop it. We're just putting down the bit that we control. So put down the active thought loop and let your mind do whatever it does, even if it's going ping, ping, ping with intrusive thoughts or difficulties. Try to soften the body, relax, observe what your mind's doing, get this non-judgmental accepting awareness going as best you can. And if judgment comes in, just notice that as well. And notice what you're feeling and then engage with the world around you. Look at the world, notice where you are, what you're doing, what I'm saying, practicing these techniques together. And then one more time, get it going again, get that compulsion loop going. The what ifs, the this will happen. I am this thing. I'm not this thing. I'm not this because of that. The inner debate, analysis, reassurance, checking, judging, criticizing ourselves, seeking certainty, introspection, checking memories any compulsion you can identify, get it going for a moment. And then again, put it down. Unhook, observe your mind, locate where you hear your thoughts, where you see the images, observe. Notice what you're feeling as well. You can spend a little bit of time investigating that piece by piece, or you can briefly acknowledge and refocus or even allow it to be there and engage. So these three options. And then this time for our engage part of the practice, we're going to actually use a bit of thinking because in life we do think, we analyze, we problem solve. We're not always in this purely mindfully aware place. So for a moment, connect in with your core values, what your recovery is about. Think about one area of your life that matters to you, work, play, love, health. Pick a core value, 
courage, kindness, commitment, playfulness, connection, whatever it might be. Think about a, a goal or an activity, an action you like that reflects that and plan how you're going to engage with that after this practice. What are you going to do? And you're going to use these skills to unhook and engage in that thing. Step by step. And the same, if our mind comes in with obsessions, just let them ping, ping, ping in the background and keep your mind on, you know, your plan and what you're going to engage in. Just keep coming back to it. Surf the urge to do compulsions, make room for feelings. Just step by step plan what you're going to do with this goal today. This area of your life you want to work on and connect to this person you want to see, hang out with, whatever it is. And then coming back to where you are, what you can see and hear and what you're doing in this moment and your body. We'll finish with a little bit of self-compassion. So you've done a really difficult thing here. It's really tough to face these distressing fears, worries, concerns, hopeless, helpless thoughts, judgment, whatever you've been working with. It's really difficult. It's really painful. You're not alone with that. So get a sense that I'm not the only one struggling with this. This is something many others are working on too. You might even think about some of the people you know who are and you would like to connect with and practice these skills together. And then maybe put a kind hand on your heart if that feels comfortable and say something motivating to yourself in a kind way. I'm going to keep working on these skills. I'm going to do what I can to practice this piece by piece at a level that I feel willing to do. I'm not going to be pushed at the wrong pace here. I'm going to take it step by step. But I am going to take myself to my learning zone, out of the comfort zone, but I'm not going to burn myself out here. And then think about compassionate action as well. How am I going to take care of myself today? This is tough right now. I can get through this. I will keep working on this. Today, I'm going to take care of myself doing X, Y, or Z. And then a little bit of self-congratulation a little mental pat on the back. This is hard work. It's difficult to do this. Our minds are really tricky. These emotions are really distressing and difficult. Well done in practicing this today. And then from here, going on to do that valued action, to go and engage in that. So putting this practice down and getting the mind into life and using the skills we've done here um, to be present, to open up and to do what matters as you go forward in your day.